Hello. 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 Test, test. I guess it would help if I turned myself on. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys today? Thanks so much for coming out, and welcome to Newbridge Fellowship. I have to say, uh, you, as you guys know, Tom and I, we switch off uh, doing music with you guys uh, once a month, so we've got a month on. Jeff and Sandy have a month on and all that, so in these times that we are away, uh, it's so nice to come back. We usually take a little bit of a vacation, and we did again this time, but it is always so great to be back with you guys, and I love seeing your smiling faces. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand up and let's praise the Lord this morning. So one of the things I think often about these days in all of these times that we have is about heaven. Do you guys think about heaven? Yes. Do you think about what you're going to see there? You're gonna be, we're going to be with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And all of the people that we're going to see, the, you know, all of the people in the Bible. Can't you, can't you think about the things that you're going to be asking? You know, what about this that happened? And tell me a little bit more about that. I particularly want to talk to David. How about you guys? Wouldn't that be awesome? I can't wait for this. So let's go ahead, and we're going to sing this morning, Mighty and Glorious. And this is about us being there in heaven and praising together, praising him together and the things that we're going to see. The sound of his voice, the roar of a thousand waterfalls. Hair white as snow, and his eyes full of fire, his face so brilliant sun. Royal and dressed in the finest of robes, wrapped in a sash of purest gold. Thousands are singing a song to the Lamb, exploding in praise to the master sire. Mighty and glorious, you are victorious, O God the Sovereign and Strong. Exalted and powerful, fearful and wonderful, O God the Infinite One. We cry, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. We're going to go back and do verse 1 again. Think about these words. Trembling in awe at the sound of his voice, the roar of a thousand waterfalls. Hair white as snow and his eyes full of fire, his face a brilliant sun. Royal and dressed in the finest of robes, wrapped in a sash of purest gold. Thousands are singing a song to the Lamb, exploding in praise to the matchless I am. Mighty and glorious, you are victorious, O God the sovereign strong. Exalted and powerful, fearful and wonderful, O God the infinite one. We cry, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. Let's do that chorus again. Amen. Mighty and glorious, you are victorious. Mighty and glorious, you are victorious, O God the sovereign and strong. Exalted and powerful, fearful and wonderful, O God the infinite one. We cry, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. There on the throne is the Son of Man. Reigning with mercy and righteousness, High Priest of God and the King of all kings, crowned with many crowns. Saints gather round on a sea of glass, worship the one who is first and last. Thousands are singing a song to the Lamb, exploding in praise to the Master Sire. Mighty and glorious, you are victorious, O God the sovereign and strong. Exalted and powerful, fearful and wonderful, O God the infinite one. We cry, Holy, Holy is the Lamb. Holy singing. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
this morning. We thank you so much, Lord. Hallelujah. We just ask you to be here this morning. Amen. I sing praises. The song has been on my heart all week, so I just had to add it.
I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name. I give glory to your name. this morning. Let's give him a clap offering again. We thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church. You guys may you know, welcome your neighbors. Say hello to your neighbors and then let's hear about hear, hear the word. Praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and worthy to be praised. Ah, I got another one in mind.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fellowship is good. Yes. But it's time for the word now. Come on. <laughs> God has an order, doesn't he? That's right. God knows what he's doing. Well, I appreciate him so much. Love the Lord. Love you guys. Love your faithfulness to the house of God. It's so important that the things of God be taught and received. I can do my best, but your part is that you open up your heart and be like they said in the book of Revelation, give us an ear, let the Spirit to hear what the Spirit has to say, amen? amen. It's what I say don't make that much difference. Um, by way of announcements, we have uh, the women's meeting is uh, Saturday, October 15th. Save the date. I don't know what that means. We have child dedication. Yay! Yeah. I don't want to have to draw everything out of you guys. Come on, <laughs> wake up a little bit. Little. <laughs> Sunday, October 16th. That's right after the women's meeting. We've got a couple of families going to dedicate their babies. Yeah. And if anybody else has a baby that needs to be dedicated, bring them down. We'll dedicate them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Movie night's coming in October. We have quite settled in on the total date yet, but uh, that's coming. Amen? Amen? I have a question to ask, and I'll ask it throughout the service probably. Um, do, you Lord, do you love the Lord enough? Amen. <laughs> do you love the Lord enough? Amen. <laughs> well, I dealt with that all week whether I love the Lord enough or not. So you're going to get what, uh, what God wants us to share, okay? Turn in your Bibles or watch your screens for John chapter 2, 23 through 25. That's a weird place to get where I'm started, but I, it's just the way it has to be. When he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, speaking of Jesus in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did. Let me say that again. Let's go back, Norman. Let me say that again. Many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Now we can move on. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of man. They, he didn't need to have anybody say, this is a good man, that's a bad man. For he knew what was in man. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word of God. And it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. God, we pray that you'd tug at us, cut at us this morning, God. Let the word get in our hearts. Let our ears be opened. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus began his earthly ministry. Uh, you know, he turned the water into wine. Didn't necessarily want to start then, but Mama said, uh, we need some help here. We need some, some more wine, and that's exactly what he did. He went back to Capernaum, one of his favorite places. When we go to Israel, uh, that's one of my favorite places because he spent more time in Kaparnehom, they say, than any other place. I like that place. He went up and he ended up casting out the money changers. Remember that story? There they questioned his authority, all the leaders. And it was here that he told the many that believed on him, when they saw the miracles, that's when they believed on him. Not that he was the son of God, not that he was here to save sinners and be the savior and go to the cross. They believed on him because of his miracles, because of his works. That's what they thought. Verse 24 is pretty clear, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew them and he knew who they were. In other words, Jesus knew that these people didn't really love him. Do you know Jesus knows if you really love him or not? 
Come on, I'm going to plant some seeds here this morning. He does. He knows how much you love him. You think there's a level of love that you can love the Lord and, and maybe be above somebody else who loves the Lord? Is that possible, you think? I mean, God always loves us. We don't have to worry about that. He's no respecter of persons, even with his love. But you, do you think people love the Lord more than you? Less than you? We're going to touch a little bit on John and say that he was the beloved apostle. I think he loved the Lord more than the rest of them did. It's the only one that was at the foot of the cross. And God found a way to use someone who loved him that much to put him up in that hotel at Patmos and get his soul attention and give him the greatest revelation known to man. Amen? Yes. Isn't that a neat thing that God does? I believe there's a lot of people that were like in Jesus day to day. They come to church, they do things for the Lord just to see what they can gain or get away from the Lord and how it's good to be a Christian today. Do you know that? It's good. A lot of favor. But I found out those who claim they're Christians when the going gets tough aren't Christians. Do you know any of those people? I know a few. Yeah. Just watch TV and you can see people say <laughs> they're Christians, boy, and they come running when it's time gets tough. My thought today and my message this day is do you really love the Lord enough? That's a question you'll be able to answer. I asked myself, I said, well, what's enough? What's enough to love the Lord? Is it to be like Moses and leave his position to lead his people into the wilderness? Is it like Abraham to sacrifice your son? Do you love the Lord more than anybody else? Do you love the Lord in that manner? He was willing to sacrifice his son. To be like Isaac, to be willing to let your dad let you sacrifice him. Does that sound familiar? Jesus did that. He was willing to leave his throne in glory. To come and die upon the cross at Calvary for your sins and my sins. How about to be like Daniel? Loving him enough that... He prayed himself into the lion's den. Come on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego willing to face the fires of hell to prove their love. Do you love him that much? Jacob willing to wrestle all night long with the Lord for his blessings. You know something, I believe that was a, I believe they call it a Christophany or something like that, Chuck would know, where Jesus come to this earth and visited before he was in human flesh. I believe it, Jacob wrestled with God himself. He wrestled all night with him and he wouldn't leave him until he got his blessing. And I believe, I believe it was the Lord and I think about it and I say, you know, gee, just pin him and move on, Lord. You know? But he wrestled with him because Jacob needed it. God didn't need to wrestle with him. Jacob needed to wrestle with him. Jacob needed to understand the principles of God. Working on all those things that Jacob had in him. You remember his story. He was a deceiver and all those great things that he did, God had to do something different for him. Wrestled with him. How about David as a young boy? Do you love enough to fight a giant 
when you're outnumbered and outsized? Can you believe God that much? Do you have that kind of faith? David is a young man rejoicing to see the ark come to Jerusalem. He loved the ark of God because it represented the presence of God. And he was happy and he was joyful. And he loved the Lord that much. It meant that much to him. The presence of God. David, the old man, willing to, ad to admit his sin to God and ask for forgiveness. He knew his wrong and he asked God to forgive him. He loved him that much. He didn't want to be on the opposite end of God, the opposing end. He didn't want to be in the life of sin. Isn't God good to forgive him for that and forgive us for our sin that way? You love him that much. And then the dying David. Loving enough to supply the riches. Giving his all to build a temple for God's people. You know how much he loved God? He supplied everything. Everything for the temple. He was willing to sacrifice all the things that he had accomplished. Willing to sacrifice his riches, giving it for the house of God. Do you love him that much? You willing to do all of that and love him that much? Give up everything you have for the kingdom of God? To love God? There's more. The prophets, major, minor ones. Willing to suffer persecution. That's coming. Willing to speak judgment and prophecy. The future, even face death the way they did. You love him that much? Others like the Virgin Mary, willing to be called and used of God. Loving enough to be remain faithful. It was at the foot of the cross of her son. She understood not only that she was her son, but she understood he was the son of God. Amen? Yeah. The son of God. She understood that principle. Paul, willing to face the Jews whom he persecuted and killed. Do you love him that much to go back and face that kind of danger and that kind of action? He had to go back and suffer all those persecutions. He was on the opposite end and met the Lord and turned on the other end. Willing to go back and preach the gospel. Being in prison, beaten. Giving up his life to show God his love. John the Baptist loved enough to be the voice crying in the wilderness to fulfill prophecy. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. We're living in a time where we could use more John the Baptist. Yes. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the Lord cometh. We need to hear that message. We need to love him enough that we'll be able to look up and say, God, here I am. Come and get us. Yes. I, I get asked all the time, you know, what's God waiting for? There's not a clicker up in heaven, by the way. And they just click and say, okay, when we reach this number, then I'm coming back. I've told you this and I've told you this before. I believe he's waiting for the church to be ready. Amen. It's the church that has to wake up. It's the church that's got to serve God and love God and fall in love with him all over again. It's all of us. We need to love him more. Amen. It's not enough. We cannot stay where we are in loving God. you got to grow. What's enough, I ask? You and I willing to love enough to love him who we've not even seen. That's a powerful love. It's easy to love somebody when you see them, but when you don't. Come on. 
Do we love the Lord enough to have that kind of faith? Without it, we can't please him. John 20, 29, I just got it now, and she won't be able to put it up, but Jesus said unto Thomas, because you've seen me, you've believed. But Jesus said, blessed are those that have not seen and yet believe. That's us. That's us. Hallelujah. We prove every time we come to church, we prove every time we open our Bibles, we prove every time we pray that we love God. Amen. How do we do that? Through the Word. Psalms 119, 105. The psalmist said, The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good reading in this world is found in the Bible. <laughs> There's great books out there. But really, the book that we should be dominating in our reading should be God's Word. Amen? Amen. It tells of God's love, of God's love. It tells of God's grace. It tells of God's Son. It tells of God's heaven. It tells of the devil's hell. Come on. That's the kind of book we have. That's the kind of God we serve. It's a lamp unto our feet. It's a reading lamp. God's thoughts are revealed and he'll read your heart for you. It's a heating lamp. Warms cold hearts. It's a miner's lamp. Shines for the deepest pit. Come on. It's a night lamp. Shines into darkness. It's a safety lamp, and it never goes out. Amen? I'm so thankful for that. Do you love the Lord enough to go to his house? Obviously, we're sitting here this morning, and obviously we do, don't we? Amen. We love the Lord enough to go to his house. We understand these scriptures, and I don't throw them out and let them go over your head. Let them sink in. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, of the gathering of ourselves together, of, of coming to church when the doors are open, gathering together, as the manner of some is. There's a lot of people quit going to church, church. I was sharing with the men on Saturday morning prayer. I've uh, read an article where they did a poll from 2020 to 2022 and in 2020, the church, the smallest church, or the average-sized church, was 235 people. You know what it is today? 65. That's the average size. When you figure in all the gigantic churches, even in this town itself, 1,000, 2,000, you know, all these great big churches, let alone the 25,000s and the 50,000 churches, that's not saying a whole bunch about the kingdom of God for the little guy, is it? I know we love to come to the house of God. We, we come all the time the doors are open. And I believe that. If, if a person really loves the Lord, he loves the house of God. It's in God's house that Christian is fed. McDonald's and Burger King and all those do a pretty good job of feeding our flesh. But if you want to come and get fed in the spirit, you've got to come to church. Amen. That's what God's house does. God's house is, that's where the gospel is preached. We're a church that still believes in that, preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We still believe in that, that God is an infallible. The Bible is infallible word of God. We still believe those principles here. You're going to hear it here. You probably won't hear it at the Bronco game. You'll hear everything else because they play the Raiders, so... You're, probably, <laughs> you're not going to hear the blessings of the Lord there. 
That's for sure. It's in God's house that we sing songs and lift Him up like we did this morning. Let our prayers and our praise come up in the presence of the Lord. Let Him be His incense, the Bible says. That's what you do in the house of God. That's how you show God's love. It's in God's house where sinners get saved. Yes, they can be saved all other kind of places, but certainly they should be saved here. And I'll add a caveat to that, and they stay saved here. <laughs> Not just get saved, but they can stay saved here. Yeah, right. Come on, church. Amen. For me, in the most, one of the most important parts of it, it's in God's house that we can meet His people. Be with my family. Right. Kathy didn't say that this week, but she always says it, so I'll reprimand her for that. <laughs> Thank you, my family. Right. She forgot to say it. She's too busy telling us other things. You are my family. We are family. I don't say that lightly. I say it because the Word of God says we are the family of God. Isn't that Amen. what the Bible says? Amen. We're sons and daughters. First and second cousins. Do you love the Lord enough to love his people? Thank you. Uh, Sister Betty gives me those amens. I'm kicking you a little bit, but that's okay. To love God's people, no matter how wacky we are, no matter how crazy we are, no matter the things that we do. Can you love God's people? He loves them. He loves us all. He's no respecter of persons. He loves us all. 1 John 4.11 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also ought to love one another. Amen. Just share the love of God. I believe the Bible is very clear that it's possible for God's people to have misunderstandings. It's all over the Word of God. You can have misunderstandings with the church. It's okay. We'll work through it, whatever it is. Whatever the under misunderstanding is, work through it. Amen. And if you live in my house and you're two years old and you don't work through it, then Nana gets the spatula and gives you a little tap to remind you. In church, sometimes we need a little tap. That's right. Amen. You can get upset with me and I can get upset with you, but we can work through it. There's going to be misunderstandings. There's no question about it. God's people are my dearest friends. Do you know that? They're my closest friends. I can't go other sources if I have a problem. It's not the same. I can't ask a friend of mine that doesn't know the Lord to pray for me. Not that God wouldn't hear the prayer, but it doesn't make sense when I can gather together on Saturday morning, have the men's put me in the center, lay their hands on me, and know that these men know God, they're in touch with God, and they're going to touch me, and things are going to happen right here at the altar. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about for yeah. the church of God. Do you love him that much to do that? Saturday mornings, do you love him that much? Of course we're all busy. Some of us work. But don't let 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.30, catch you in bed. I don't think you love the Lord that much. That's just my personal opinion. I know you can pray at home. I pray at home. I pray driving. I do. I can count on God's people to pray when I'm sick, coming down the prayer chain. Yeah. In sorrow, I can call on God's people. I can ask people to pray for me that know me. In suffering, in sin, do you love God's people that much? I get so tired, and I'm as guilty as you are this morning. I'll pray for you. Okay. If I remember to pray for you, 
I'll pray for you. I'm starting to get in the habit when I, someone says, will you pray for me? I just stop and pray. It's a good time to do it. Lord, you know what they need. Before we ask, you know. So I can stop right here on the street. I can be on the bus. I can be driving in my car. I could be at a restaurant. Someone said, pray for me. I'll pray for you right now. God, you know what they need. You don't have to expose anything. God knows what they need before they even ask it. Just stop and pray and it's over with. You're agreeing with them and you're agreeing with God. And if two or three agree, then in the midst of us is the Holy Spirit, is God. Things can get done when God's in the house. Amen? Amen. Do we love him enough to honor his son? Revelations 4.11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things. And for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Do you love Him enough to constantly praise Him, give Him honor of who He is? I believe the church does really a tremendous job of praising, praying, do a good job in that area. But what about just honor? You ever just stop and just honored God? Come on, we forget. It's okay. I'm, I'm preaching to myself. It's okay. We forget honor in our services. Thank God in our songs we can do that. We can give God honor. But personally, you've got to honor God. I thank you for who you are. I thank you because you're the Lord God, Jehovah himself. You sent your son for me. Give him honor. You, he deserves all honor. He deserves all glory. Yeah. I'm trying to be a full gospel preacher. And I don't mean full here. I mean covering all of our bases, honor and love and praise and pray, fasting and all the things that God wants for the New Testament church. We can't get away from it, church. And so many have. He deserves our honor. He deserves the glory. Amen. To honor the Son of God is a great privilege in my opinion. We should honor him by trusting him. We should honor him by telling of him, sharing the gospel with people. Amen. That's an honor. We have a visitor today, Leonard. Arlene just shared. They had a common song. They're singing songs on the bus. Amen. Come on. That's church. Amen. They're having church on the bus. Right. It's okay. I wish I was there. It's a good old song. We honor him by thinking of him. God knows your thoughts. Trust me. We can honor him by triumphing in him. When something good happens, give him the honor. Give him the praise. Give him the glory. And then you can take some of it when you've accomplished something. I believe this morning there's a need for us to examine ourselves. And ask ourselves, do we love the Lord enough? The answer is obvious. No, we don't. doesn't take away that we love Him, but it takes away that we don't love Him enough. We're living in a time where the enemy likes to take away our time. Time, we probably should be serving the Lord a little more. Enemy's good at it. There's something going on all the time, church. I'm as busy as anybody. God's always got us doing things. But there's moments where you can stop, and I believe God honors that kind of movement, that kind of prayer, when you just take a moment or two and just acknowledge God. Father, I thank you. I'm really busy. I only got a, I got a deadline, but I still want to stop. Amen. 
I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but a lunch break, a restroom break, it's a good place <laughs> to get alone with God. <laughs> just say, thank you, Father. So get away sometimes. Just th- I believe he honors that. Believe in my heart that he'll honor just those little moments that you say, God, I, you mean so much to me. You guys know how that is. A friend gives you a text. Just that moment that you get the text, you feel good about it. Don't you? Or bad about it. But it means something. One quick little five-second text. Let alone to stop and say, God, I just appreciate everything you're doing for us. And church, do we love him enough to separate from the world? 2 Corinthians 16, 17 says this. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come on. Come out from among them. And be separate, saith the Lord. And do not even touch the unclean thing. And I'll receive you. Come out. Don't be like them. Be like the world. We know how they act. We're around them all the time. It's clear why it's in Scripture to seek first the kingdom of God. You set up your schedule in the morning and the day, seek first the kingdom of God. The other stuff's going to work out. And if it doesn't, does it really matter? matter? You know what really matters is the eternal things that we do on this earth before we go to heaven. You know, that's what's going to make a difference. Not what you build down here. It doesn't make any difference at all what you build down here. But if you're doing the things that God wants you to do and you're building for the kingdom, there's an old, I believe it's J. Vernon McGee. And that's how old I am. I went to school with him, kind of. And uh, not literally, I'm in Bible school with him. <laughs> Not that old. But I believe it was him that said, you know, God's building a place for us, a dwelling place. You can say mansion if you want, and everybody has these thoughts of, man, I want this picture up and a fireplace here. It really means a dwelling place. I don't know what it's going to be. But J. Vernon McGee says, you know why it said I go to prepare a place for you? Because he's waiting for you to send him material. That's what J. Vernon McGee says. Through your prayers, through your walk, through your witnessing, you're sending him praise. You're sending him food. And, I mean, not food, but you're sending him material to build your mansion. Come on. Do we love the Lord enough? Do you love him as much as you did or more than when you got saved? I can tell you one thing, and we're we were silly about it, but that's the way God had us. Delphi and I witnessed throughout all North Denver when we got saved. I may have told this story before, but it's still worth telling. We told everybody. I was embarrassing, kind of. You know the Lord? I don't even know you, let alone the Lord. What are you talking about? <laughs> Strangers. I just wanted everybody to love the Lord and experience what God did for me and saved me from the depths of hell and put me on the king's highway. I wanted to let everybody know that that's out there for you. I didn't even know how to witness. I just start telling them my story of what God did for me. Take me off the streets of North Denver. Get me off from peddling drugs, doing drugs, and all the bad things that were out there. I just tell them my story. That's how we overcome them is by our testimony. Amen? Amen. Do we love the Lord enough? 
I think we can. I got something to read. I came across it this morning. Someone asked Jesus, if you'll remember the story, and Tom, would you come up? I'm just wrapping up here. And they asked Jesus, what, what's the greatest commandment? We know there's 10. They were a Jewish person that asked him, and all the 613 commandments. They asked Jesus, which one's the greatest of all of them? There's so many to keep. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. Which one? They were curious. Jesus gave him, I believe, what is the central answer to that question. He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That's all in, church. That is all in. No matter where you're at, what you're doing, that's all in. And then he said, there's another one that's close to that. And that's to love your neighbor as yourself. I don't know about you, but I want to love him more than I ever have. I'm challenged this week to love him more, to think about him more, to praise him more, to honor him more, to spend more time with my best friend. This is what I want to read and then we'll be done, okay? Kathy, you can make your way up. This author wrote, It was not that Adam and Eve stopped loving. They were created as lovers. You know that? God created mankind to be a loving creature. Adam and Eve were cre created as his lovers in the image of God. God wanted them to love the animals, love everything around them. He created them with love. They couldn't undo that. We can't undo that. Instead, their love turned, this author said. When the Apostle Paul writes of sinners, he describes them as lovers of themselves. Come on. Lovers of money. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's how Paul says a sinner is. Come on, church. Lovers, we remain, but sometimes we get twisted. Our love gets misdirected, and perverted, the author of this article said. We're created to love God. That's our purpose, to love God. But instead, we turn and love ourselves and anything that's just the opposite of God at times. I know one thing for sure. I think you have that scripture for me. Amen. Listen what Matthew 24, 13 says. You're going to love God. There's going to be tough times. You're going to face tough times. But it's written that he shall endure who that but he that shall endure to the end. Not quit halfway, not three quarters of the way, stop loving God. Many are doing it. There's a falling away happening. We all know that's, that's prophesied and that's happening right in our, our time we live in. But it's them that endure to the end. Don't you want to love the Lord till he comes? I do. I want to love him more and more. Amen. I, I'll pray for you at the end. Kath, come and lead us in a song. family. Let's go ahead and stand together, shall we?
Yeah, I'll probably have another song or two. If I ask for an altar call, uh, it's not big enough for all of us. So we'll just turn these chairs all the way back to the end of the wall. We'll make that our altar today, okay? The altar is where you want it to be. That's right. Abraham built them everywhere. He built them in, under the tree. He built them by the brook. He built an altar. Every place he stopped, he built an altar. Doesn't have to be up here. All of us want want to love the Lord more, don't we? Amen. I want to pray. Father, I pray these seeds are planted. You planted them in my heart, God. And I want to love you more than I ever have. There's a level of love that I want to reach, Lord. I want to serve you. I want you to be first in everything I do. I ask that your blessings be upon the people today, God. You see people that love you, they're here. They're here. They love you enough to be here, to hear the word. I pray that that special blessing to be upon them, God. I pray a special touch from the Holy Spirit, special revelation of how much you love us. That would help us, God. We need a revelation of how much you love us, and we can love you. We pray a special blessing. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? The name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Amen. Let the demons tremble when they hear that word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. In that powerful name, we thank you. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's sing a little bit more. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy.
service. We have one more song today, but I just wanted to take a second and pray for you guys as we go along our way. Lord God, I just thank you so much for each and every person that has come here today, Lord. And I just ask for your hedge of protection around each and every person as they go about their way this week. Lord God, we just ask that each and every person would be changed today, that they would be different from when they came in. We thank you for it. We believe you for it in the name of Jesus. Let's finish up with good, good father. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Good, good father. 